story of My Hero Academia starts two ways. It starts with Deku, a powerless kid desperate to become something more. And it starts with a manga ready to be adapted into an anime. And instead of letting it just fall into some sort of production hellscape, Toho producer Wakana Okamura believed that it could be something more than that. She realised that most shonen manga adaptations aren't really familiar with having high quality production values and saw a potential for My Hero Academia to reach more people. Studio Bone shows have a record of being popular overseas and Okamura was already familiar with director Kenji Nagasaki's work on Gundam Build Fighters. So it already had potential, thanks to our high quality staff, now including the renowned character designer Yoshihiko Umakoshi. And all that was left at that point, was to make it. My Hero Academia is a series that both builds on the appeal of the manga whilst creating its own appeal. It's like a model adaptation. Even though the story is already written out, production allowed time for the staff to work on the series year long but only have to complete one or two seasons each year, while spending the rest of the time planning and working on the next season. This allows the team to recalibrate, work out new approaches and plan roles for the next season. It helps that even in a world where Konosuba swapped studios, Attack on Titan swapped directors and One Punch Man swapped everything, the My Hero Academia staff are prepared to stick with it. Even the movie, they could have easily said, hey we're busy, let one of the younger staff have a go, but they're clearly passionate about this story. And their presence means a lot. It's a draw for other staff members to help out. Directors and storyboard artists who have worked with Nagasaki in the past helped him out again. And much of the staff of Kekai Sensen were attached thanks to My Hero Academia being planned by the same Bones and Toho production staff. But we should probably start with Umikoshi. In every interview where they ask what was challenging about My Hero Academia, he just responds with time. As chief animation director and character designer on the series, it was his responsibility to make sure that animation reflected the style he developed into the character designs. So a lot of his time was spent redrawing animation and adding features that make them stand out. His designs have deep shading, thick lines and distinctive expressive faces. He's known as the character designer for Cash and Sins, Heart Catch Precure and Magical Doremi, so his position on My Hero Academia is kind of a celebrity entry. He regards himself as not having a particular style, but rather just finds a way to have designs that reflects the original work appropriately whilst also being easy to animate. But this doesn't mean that the designs aren't distinctive. Rather, it's the opposite, with him reinventing his approach for each series. But as I mentioned before, this takes time. There's only so much he can correct week to week, focusing on getting the important scenes ready for broadcast. And then, even before the series has finished airing, he has to go back to those episodes that went out unfinished and start doing corrections ready for the release of the Blu-ray, where scenes will be turned from this to this. Even though My Hero Academia takes a break from broadcasting for at least half a year, the team are always flat out working on it. Animators will use this time to play up to their own strengths, not in the name of consistency, but in regards to what they feel will play out best on screen. Umikoshi isn't interested in restricting visual freedom as long as the end product represents the visual style of the characters. For instance, this is a cut by Kazuhiro Miwa for episode 4, and here are his original keyframes from it. The additions made from there were all extra lines and thickness to fit the My Hero Academia style and amplify the scene rather than change it. Season 1 was a time for getting things right, finding their feet and introducing us not only to the story of My Hero Academia but also the styles of animation we could expect and how these extraordinary powers would play out on screen. 
and the season concludes with a full demonstration of All Might's power, animated by a team of young animators including Kazuto Arai, who uploaded his rough animation of the explosive impact. But season 2 was all about amping things up. Not only was there more fights to be had than the first season, but even the character acting stepped up to a new level, giving characters new ways of expressing themselves. And even though the character animation had improved, it wasn't a zero-sum game, as more talent became available for Season 2, working to make the tournament arc stand out. Gundam Thunderbolt director Kor Matsuo and genius mecha animator Ken Otsuka were regular appearances as storyboard artists. Oscar was a storyboard artist and animator who amplified Kenji Nagasaki's Gundam Bill Fighters series, and it was great to see them working together again on My Hero Academia. Likewise, Full Metal Alchemist director Seiji Mizushima stepped in for Season 2, Episode 6. Mizushima was also the director of Gundam 00, where Nagasaki directed and storyboarded a ton of episodes. So this is kind of a role reversal. I would have liked to see him board an action episode, but his work on My Hero Academia did give us some great dramatic shots like this, including some great moments with Endeavor. But if you ask anyone what the highlight of the tournament arc was, even Umikoshi will tell you it was episode 10. In interviews with both IGN and ANN, he specifically points out this episode as being the most important. It was one of the most important stories of the season and he needed to allocate cuts carefully to fit the strengths of each animator. And it would reach a climax with an extended scene by one of anime's top action animators. You Bones animator Yutaka Nakamura is perhaps one of the most recognisable animators in the industry. His most famous cuts often involve a moving camera, super speed action and explosive impacts that often end up in cubic debris. He's done other stuff most recently with silly character acting in Keikai Sensen, but judging from fan reactions, it's these action sequences that spark a reaction. Nakamura wasn't available for season 1, presumably due to being busy with the concurrently airing Concrete Revolution. But he made his season 2 splash in episode 3 with this striking scene where Todoroki takes down a large training mech and runs away. These cuts are some of the highlights of Nakamura's latest incompleteness animation book. I have my own signed copy, but thanks to Jem for scanning and compiling it into a moving rough animation. Nakamura is a celebrity onto My Hero Academia, but he's certainly not the be-all and end-all of My Hero Academia action. There's a dedicated super team of action animators attached to the project who made Season 2 into a spectacle. One such person is Takashi Mitani, a Bones animator who handled several cuts in Season 2 Episode 5. You will probably remember the clash between Deku and Todoroki, where Deku tries to steal his headbands, but his cut with Ida using his engine quirk is intense, showing his exhaust heating up from the inside. He then blasts off with an incredible display of speed that just made the episode for me. Beyond the tournament arc, we got a really neat combination of cuts in the battle with Stain. The great thing about these is that they're cuts that show multiple different powers at the same time, and the scene is restricted to a small alley, allowing for some really interesting choreography where they're leaping up the walls. This arc had two great scenes from animator Masaya Sekizaki, one where Ida attempts to kick Stain, and another where Endeavor hunts down a Nomu. Ever since Todoroki first unleashed his fire, fire animation has been a pillar of My Hero Academia action. Different animators portray it in different ways. Yutaka Nakamura showed it like a rocket exhaust, burning so hot that you can't see the individual flames, while Sekizaki made a point of showing the individual flames flickering wildly. Throughout Season 2 and Season 3, you can see different approaches to Todoroki's power, and they make up some of the best moments in these seasons. But for now, let's move on to the currently airing Season 3. 
early on in the season, fearing an attack from the League of Villains, the cast head off into the mountains to stretch the limits of their quirks. This is shown through a great extended sequence by animator Yuki Sato, where they show each character testing their abilities, often in the same frame. One of the best cuts is Denki's attempt to maintain his electricity as he struggles wildly. It's worth mentioning that this is the first season without Umekoshi doing animation direction at all. He shared the role in the past, but he's presumably been too busy with the My Hero Academia movie to supervise the third season. But that said, even with his exceptional talent and thorough corrections, the show can comfortably go on without him, thanks to an ever-growing team of talents. This season, we had yet another talented guest storyboard artist in the form of Kekai Sensen director, Rie Matsumoto. Kenji Nagasaki storyboarded the charming burger episode in Kekai Sensen for her, and on the flip side, Matsumoto did the same with the fun training episode in My Hero Academia. The episode was filled with small quirks and comedic framing and clever ways to establish character dynamics within a scene. My Hero Academia is a clash of calm and commotion. One episode will be about character bonding, and the next will be a series of epic fights. Season 3 summed this dynamic up pretty damn well. In episode 11, French animator Cedric Carole animated the collision between All Might and All For One, using hundreds of speed lines as anticipation to emphasise the power involved. Carole even uploaded the raw keyframes, giving us a better idea of all the work that was put into making this scene one to be remembered. He wasn't the only French animator to work on this season either. Both Mehdi Alshawi, whose name I've just butchered, and Ken Arto worked on a Slice of Life episode where the cast were checking out their dorms, and they've shared their work online as well. By having talented foreign animators involved in high-profile projects, it doesn't just increase the pool of talent, but it creates a global precedent. Seeing people from your own country make that step over to working on major episodes of popular anime sends out a message that it really is possible. Some of the French staff on My Hero Academia Season 3 have been working in the industry for decades, but social media allows generations of animation talent to interact, and by having public positive examples and ways for animators abroad to communicate and introduce themselves, well, you get stuff like Boruto Episode 65. My Hero Academia is a show made to be exceptional. From the very outset, it was planned in a way that would allow for the quality consistent animation that its producer felt wasn't common for other shonen adaptations. And although not all of the talents involved in the first season were able to return for future seasons, others joined to demonstrate what they felt My Hero Academia could be. The series will only ever be as strong as the creative staff that make it. Every punch that we take for granted has been toiled over rethought and redrawn as the animation talents seek to understand the characters, their abilities and their personalities in motion. I've been doing this sort of content long enough to know that even I can't remember all of the names that I include in these videos. But if the names can't be the takeaway from this video, then let it be the impact, and how the individual creativity of many people and the production environment that it stems from can create stories that appeal to millions across the world. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect, but before I go, I'd like to thank the super people for supporting the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank the heroic Little Crow, the super-powered Hamad, the selfless Austin Hardwick, the fearless Shannon Schofner, the chivalrous Salima, the gallant Cappy Bro, the valiant Shishi, the courageous Pfeiffer, the costumed Chariot, the super-speed Yuan Argil, the bold Christopher Wade, the Resolute Jakob Gard, Froppy the Rainy Hero, otherwise known as Frogkun, The Dauntless Arc Disruptor, The Benevolent Mike Tamborelli, Literally my own supermother, And is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Isaac Wu. To support the channel just like these heroes, please visit patreon.com slash thecanoperaffect.